Where did I go wrong? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. How did I end up in this universe between Blair and Rose on a Contra Points video when, in fact, I felt as though we were just having a conversation on Rose of Dawn's channel? But apparently, certain opinions, certain jokes cannot be said because if you didn't know, you're about to find out. Trans people are very sensitive and you can't fuck around. About it, but I think that how they present, how someone presents is not really the main story. I mean, if, if someone psychologically no, it is identifies though. It is though. Like, that actually is how pronouns work. Pronouns for 99.9% .9 of the world are not a thought process. You think pronouns it's are a quick assessment of what a person looks like based on secondary sex characteristics and making a snap, not even a judgment, it's not even a thought. I'd be curious to know what ContraPoints thinks about her experience today in society versus back then when she identified as genderqueer and I don't know how far along she was in her transition, if at all, but my point remains, people read you by your secondary sex characteristics. So this idea that everybody can be trans, and I know you're probably thinking, nobody is saying that. You don't have to say it for people to catch on. I mean, there really are no rules to being trans. Anybody can identify as trans. Because how do you prove an identity? You really, you can't. You can't. If I go out into the world today and I start identifying as a female again, most of the time I'm probably not going to be read as a female because I've already been through all these changes. That's just the truth. Um, if you engage with some of these detransitioners, sometimes they're read as male, sometimes as female, sometimes people don't know. It all depends how far you're in transition or not. Because when you medically transition, secondary sex characteristics become a thing. When you go through surgeries, obviously you pass a little bit more as a male or female. And when you go out into society, you're read as a male or female. Why am I saying all this though? Well, I'm bringing this up because it seems that despite the fact that that video I think is like four years old, despite the fact that this trans discourse has been going on for about four to five years old now, people still don't want to just say these things. I know that ContraPoint gets it. She's not stupid. She fully understands how important secondary sex characteristics are in society for you to be read as male and female. She probably does understand that biological differences does matter in certain cases. She's not going to say any of these things, though, because we know what happens when she speaks her mind in a controversial sort of way, you know, kind of like that time where people nearly destroyed her because they wanted to cancel her because she said stuff that made people feel invalidated. It got so vicious, in fact, that she had to delete her Twitter account because she was effectively cancelled by the non-binaries who, even upon deleting her account, they still weren't happy. They still wanted more blood. And, you know, this is par for the course. Actually, uh, Natalie did another apology to the mob saying, as those of you who pay attention to social media have probably noticed, I'm at the centre of another controversy, this time about my inclusion of Buck Angel as a voiceover actor in Opulence. Buck is a well-known trans activist who has expressed support for trans medicalism. Some people have taken my association with him as evidence I am secretly a trans medicalist, and a large part of the trans community on Twitter is upset with me because of it. Because when you build your audience based on validating everybody, and not really arguing what people say, even when they sound deluded, well, of course, of course, you're at a point today where you can't really step out of line because you've already gained 800,000, almost 900,000 subs. These subs have been loyal to you because you feed their feelings. They feel invalidated all the time, but when they plug into your channel, they feel valid because you don't really question shit. So no doubt, no doubt it's hard for you to openly say certain things and be more authentic, you know? The fact that Zinnia Jones made a very carefully worded, searched refutation of some of your points about trans children, and you responded by attacking her teeth. I, this just seems to me like it's kind of, it's okay, kind of how high school bully behavior. Contra points just like back then, today, still pretty hung up on what people are saying and kind of more concerned with feelings, you know? 
Um, no, this isn't a fact over feeling joke, but you know, it's not a matter of, well, we should all just be punching bags and treat each other like garbage. That's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, can we stop coddling and pandering to everybody? Um, sometimes our feelings are going to get hurt. Sometimes Contra might say something I don't like. Sometimes Blair might say something I don't like. That's fine. I don't have to take everything so personal. You don't have to take everything so personal. But I just find it very ironic that the video that Contra made, which is titled Cringe, featured, you know, like Rose of Dawn, who's at 30,000 subs, barely getting her foot through the door, honestly. Like, I think her channel's been up for maybe a little over a year, not too long. Um, so was it really necessary for Contra to put Rose out there in such a way? Of course not. Of course not. Um, Rose has been creating content for not that long. Um, you don't have to like her videos, but she's basically being critical of problems that she sees in the community. And was talking about Jessica and Eve well before anybody else was. But you don't know that because you're not in that sort of discourse. You don't really concern yourself with any of that. You're more worried with, oh my God, I invalidated non-binary people today, so let me apologize. Even though how I feel about pronouns is actually exactly how I feel about it. Like, you would rather change your mind to kiss ass than to be your authentic self. Meanwhile, you also want to act like making fun of people and all this stuff is, is bad. You know, it's cringy, it's bad, we're awful humans, yet you literally just did the same thing in this video. And my biggest problem with this video is that you are fulfilling this idea that a lot of people go around saying, which is people like me, Rose of Dawn, Blair White, um, maybe Calvin Guerra too, like, we're always told that we're self-hating trans people. We're bootlickers, we're all these awful things, right? Because, like, just think about that for a second. You can't be a certain type of trans person without believing specific ideology or you're self-hating. And on some level, like, that does get old and it, I mean, it does kind of hurt. Like, it's like, dude, I'm, I'm not self-hating. I don't think anybody that I engage with who I consider a friend like Rose is self-hating. But because we somehow challenge the bullshit that this whole community repeats day in and day out, we're self-hating? Sorry that we're not boring and we don't want to regurgitate the same shit. Now, the other thing about it is I knew that as soon as this video got out, like the biggest issue was exactly that. Now, instead of getting you know, nasty comments about us being self-hating, maybe let's a few times a day. Now it's going to be multiplied because you've painted us out to be these self-hating, cringy trans people. And in fact, the first video that popped up already is doing exactly that, is letting us know that we just shouldn't be questioning trans people. Natalie talks about the fact that there is this trans male who makes YouTube videos constantly calling out trans trenders, right? These are the same fucking thing. This little fat chubby boy that looks like a fucking, they don't look like a girl, but they don't look like a fucking man. They look like a fat little boy or they look like maybe a lesbian or whatever. I don't give a fuck about their passability. They are not the most passable person in the world, but they pass. But what they're doing by posting these trans trend to hunt videos. If I look amused, it's because I, I am. I laughed out loud when I saw this video. Not because of the things that she said about Calvin, but because she's such a hypocrite. So blatantly obvious that what you believe in and what you claim to be is not what you're actually presenting. So people like you, whatever your name is, and also people like Contra, you know, you, on camera, you're like, oh, that's wrong, don't, you, don't, you can't be critical of the trans community, uh, I can't believe you said mean words to them, oh my god, did you see what Blair White did, but behind cameras, off cameras, 
it's pretty evident by your reaction that, in fact, you are exactly what you are disgusted by. So you, you want to talk about self-hating? I'm sorry, but I've, I have yet to go off the way you did about anybody who's trans. And believe me, I've been pretty disgusted by people like Yaniv. The worst I'll do is just not use a fucking pronoun on them. Horrible, right? Meanwhile, Calvin Guerra, who I believe he's 19, 20 years old. I don't know. I, I consider him pretty, pretty damn young because I'm pretty damn old. But you, you said this little fat chubby boy who doesn't you were going to you were going to call him a girl. But let's be honest, you kind of backpedal because you realize, oh, hold on. Misgendering is a no no against the rules. But really, you backpedaled and then you said he just does, he well, he doesn't really look like a girl. He looks, he, but he doesn't look like a man. He looks like a fat little boy. First of all, uh, I don't think any, anybody's going to like that because there's this thing called today, fat shaming. That's a no-no. Also, then you call him a lesbian, which, are you fucking kidding me? A lesbian is a girl. So you still called him a girl, just in a really fucking bizarre way. And did he deserve that? What, because he made videos that are making fun of people, which, by the way... I don't agree with his approach. Like, I I think his overall intent is that he believes that there's an issue with a lot of people identifying as trans. That you know, not, then they detrans. Um, so there is such a thing as people that are trans trenders. I mean, you don't want to call them that. That's fine. But that is an issue. Now he could probably use a different approach for sure. But what you did is exactly what you're crying about in this video. You don't like what's happening with Chris Chan. You don't like what Calvin Gare is doing to other people. And you are here basically doing something similar. So that is a whole lot of bullshit. Um, and another thing I wanted to note too is in the video, you said something about like, yeah, you don't really care about passability. But then you made a comment about Calvin passing. Like you, you insulted him, but then at the end there, you cleaned it up. And you're like, well, he kind of does pass or whatever. It's like, do you care about passability or not? Can you be straight up honest about that? Probably not. Because the reason we can't be, you know, straight up about passability and how this matters is because there's a lot of people that don't want to try to pass. They don't want to assimilate. They want to go off by what they identify up here. They think that because I say and feel that in my brain I'm a woman or a man, then obviously everybody's going to see that. No, you dumb shit. We can't see that. It's an identity. So you don't want to... You know, you don't want to be real, but I'll be real about this. And I'm sure other people, as it stands, are going to start speaking out and being real because I'm really fed up with all this crap, this endless pandering and lying to people. Like, passability does obviously matter to an extent. That's why we all do it. Not because it's fun. It's obviously a lot of work. But I know that by transitioning, secondary sex characteristics are read a lot, and that allows me to assimilate and just blend in and be another dude, not necessarily be a trans dude in society, which is not what I want to do. Obviously, other people don't want to try to pass, so that's fine. You can be a trans something in society. I don't want to do that. Other people don't want to do that. So can we please stop this whole, like, passability is wrong and privilege and all this crap? Enough. Outside of those people, the, the normal population has no fucking clue who these people are. I hear this a lot from some people. They just kind of want to push us to silence honestly they, that, that's really what they want to do like look i understand that you know i could say my opinions right i could speak my mind sure but it's going to come with a lot of backlash which is why you don't hear a lot of people talking about certain things it's not that people aren't aware or don't care it's that a lot of people who happen to be trans are suppressing what they actually want to say because people like you and other YouTubers, you, you make it so that people are uncomfortable and feel like they have to walk on eggshells or just completely not say anything about something that they feel they're against or disagree with. So I feel like if I have to sit here listening to some of you people say a bunch of dumb shit, then I guess you're going to have to hear my dumb shit too. Infamous IRC chat between Chris and two trolls, Clyde Cash and Billy Mays, on the 20th of January 2009. 
Casio Mays claimed Chris's penchant for wearing women's underwear showed he secretly wanted to be a girl, or as a way of expressing his repressed homosexuality, an accusation often levied at Chris due to his extreme homophobia. In response, Chris tried to deflect from the accusations by openly admitting he regularly soils himself, saying, I have numbers of pairs of dirty, cropped briefs, indicating this happened so regularly he ran out of clean underwear of his own, opting to use his mother's instead. Cash responded by saying, Okay, so I'm not going to play the whole video. I will link it down below for anybody that wants to watch. It's about 30 minutes long. Um, I will be playing the last bit of this video here in a second, though. Um, I just want to say a few things. You know, I, I I understand, like, some people have really weird kinks, you know. Um, I'm not going to be here kink shaming anybody. But to me, if you watch this video, I what I got from it was... This person seems to have a lot more issues going on and probably transitioning might not be the best thing for them to do right now, maybe later, but it seems like they have a lot of issues going on and they need help with those issues before transitioning. Now, I'm for some gatekeeping. I'm not saying we need to gatekeep like crazy. Um, obviously, you know, I don't think it's helpful to make it an impossible process when some of us transition at different times and have been dealing with dysphoria for longer periods. So no, it's not about gatekeep the crap out of everything, right? It's, it's more of, we have to be careful with what we're putting out there. And honestly, right now, what we're putting out there is validate anybody that says they're trans. Why not? Um, you know, if somebody wants to be a woman, why not? And if somebody wants to say that woman is just an identity, why not? And I'm sorry, but this sort of free for all is a problem and that's why we have people that clearly need help and are being completely distracted and not just distracted but they're probably they're obviously not getting the help they need but my point is they're more focused on this idea of being a woman you know or transitioning to be trans which is for the most part seen in a very sort of glamorous way right we focus so much on the aesthetic of being a man or woman and I don't think that's very healthy because when you have people that are not mentally stable, they look at the whole trans thing and they, what they get from it is, well, I could be trans too because what you're saying is we're all valid. Um, and that is a problem. I mean, I honestly don't care to, like, if you don't want to agree and you don't want to recognize that, that's fine. But it is a problem. And the more, the more we kind of try to ignore this issue and sweep it under the rug, it's not going to make it go away. Other people are going to notice the problem. And by other people, I mean people that will actually weaponize all these issues against us. And then we're, we're going to have to gatekeep. But it's not going to be our choice. It's going to be other people doing it because now they're scared shitless of trans people because we have these mentally unstable Jessica and Eves running around. Now, I'm not trying to fear monger anybody. I'm not saying that the majority of trans people are like this. No, I don't believe that. I believe the majority of trans people are just your average person, nothing crazy. But the problem is, of course, the media will pick up certain stories and run with it. And when they do that, they investigate how things happen, how this person got on hormones. And then they're going to look at us and be like, well, what the hell? Like, do you guys not keep at all? Um, so that is an issue. So I don't know. Like, to me, it just seems that any sort of criticism is taken as a targeted attack. Um, I see this commonly with anybody who's creating content that might not focus on the positives of a trans person and they criticize something and, and now they're, they're hateful. They're targeting trans people. They're transphobic. They're a turf. I'm sorry, but we're not perfect. And people are noticing, not just trans people, people outside of our community, whatever, like are noticing that there are issues going on. And to me, it's probably better that we tackle these issues on our own and discuss them and be critical of them. Why not? I feel like any community that wants to actually successfully keep going would probably look at the bad and the good in it. Um, and again, like I'm not saying that it's okay to completely drag Chris Chan. I don't think that that's what Rose of Dawn was saying either. But we need to look at the behaviors, the issues that some people have, and then they get on hormones. And, and honestly, it's just, it's not okay. You know, and if we look at something like informed consent, like, look, I used informed consent. It was great for me because as an adult, I wanted to be able to get there already. Now, 
The problem with informed consent, though, is I didn't really feel like I was informed too much. So if I feel like that, then that makes me think that somebody like Chris Chan or someone else similar to that person will be placed on hormones rather fast. Um, and I'm talking about fast because I'm specifically referring to the United States informed consent. So you get placed on hormones and then, I mean, that that's it. You're on your own. They get, they tell you what to expect. They tell you the risk. Um, half the time they don't know everything and you're informing them. Next thing you know, you are on hormones. Um, and now you're dealing with stuff that you didn't, you like it's, it's a, your world changes. And I don't understand why people like don't like realize this. Um, so when when you go on hormones and everything is changing, like your physical, mental, like you know, you're changing. Things are happening all over again, right? Puberty, weird stuff. Um, it's pretty intense, I think, uh, at least in the case of FTM. But you know, it's not mandatory to to see a therapist. You're just sent off with hormones. So if let's say, for example, I had I don't know bipolar, anxiety, depression, PTSD, or something like. Let's say I had a bunch of different issues and I go take hormones and I'm not seeing a therapist. Um, okay, well, I'm pretty sure that those hormones are going to impact me a lot different than other people because I have all these other issues right now as it is. So now I'm adding more weight to my problems because I don't know how to deal with my depression and dysphoria and the hormones changing my body. Like, I mean, this is not rocket science. I really, it frustrates me that we can't agree that this is a problem and it's not okay. And honestly, I find it insulting. If these medical experts actually care, they should have a way better system for us. So why can't we at least unite on that fact? Because I do think we deserve way better care than we get. I don't think it needs to be gatekeeping to the extreme, but can we, for the love of God, come together and agree on this? And why not? Like, let me know in the comments down below. Like, why can't we agree on this? Um, so I wanted to just play this last part um, here of this video real quick. <clears throat> Poor parenting and external influences have left him in a position where a real intervention needs to be made before he truly passes the point of no return. And with him being convinced the dimensional merge will take place at any moment, it's doubtful this will ever happen. The misadventures of Christine Western Chandler will continue to entertain, bemuse, and horrify the internet for many years to come. But he serves as an example of how easy it can be to simply claim to be trans when there are multiple serious issues at play, and how external influences may lead someone into becoming something they're not. I've tried to keep my analysis true and honest. But until next time, peace and have a good day. But yeah, I don't, I don't understand what the problem is. Um, I don't know that ContraPoints watch the whole video because it just doesn't add up. To me, it just seemed very, very easy to just use Rose of Dawn to prove her point that, you know, cringe reactionary is just bad. Well, yeah, cringe reactionary can be bad. Some of it can be funny. Some of it can be super toxic, totally. But this video is 30 minutes long. I felt like it was more informative than anything else. And as you can see, the conclusion to this video, she basically highlights the the issue, which is what she's trying to expose here, is that it's you know it's pretty easy to just say that you're trans today. Anybody can do it. Anybody. You don't need anything beyond that, and you're trans. So that should have been the takeaway, Contra, but I guess that was just too hard for you. I don't know. Um, so I just feel like it's very dishonest to use Rose of Dawn in that way. At the end of the day, this is a more or less random civilian sex fiend off the streets of Vancouver, BC. The only reason anyone has heard of her at all is that Vanessa decided to go full to catch a predator and turn this grimy reprobate into a minor anti-celebrity. She is not one of the most important characters in the world, but it sounds like what she is, Rose, is one of the most important characters in your brain. It's pretty obvious to anybody that was paying attention at the time that what Rose is referring to here is the fact that the Yaniv story broke out and kind of exploded into mainstream. That was it. I'm not sure why he had to be so petty, but it's all good. Um, and then on top of the fact that last part, 
you're making it seem as though Rose is like delusional or something and it's all in her head. Um, no, it's not. Trust me. Also, Rose is just herself on camera. You, however, play an endless amount of characters. So one could argue there's probably a lot in your head. Whereas others argue that she is a part of this quite vicious cancel culture that has developed over the last couple of years and someone who is quite willing to judge other people as being fascists or transphobic or any other buzzword you can think of because current year. Cringe. Shame. I'm ashamed. Before I wrap up this video, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching and also I apologize, this is probably kind of scattered. Uh, I didn't really plan on making a video today. Uh, if you're following me on other social media, like I was trying to take a break from all of this because I'm just not in the correct headspace. But my point is, um, I hope that you understand the hypocrisy and how um, how wrong it is. Like, you know, I, I don't care if somebody wants to mock me, you want to call me names, you want to criticize me, that's fine. I mean, I, I would hope you have a good point to make, but that's fine. My problem is when certain people are allowed to insult other people because those people are not okay in their book and when certain people like to act as though they never step out of line yet they make a video literally doing something that they said they're so against right so that's kind of what I'm referring to um, it just like just be real I, I know there's a fucking camera and you have subs but Jesus Christ like be you somehow like Say what you mean, do what you say. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all I have to say on this. Like, it just blows my mind. Like, I, I feel like I'm the same person on camera, off camera. I'll say the same things on camera, off camera. And if I step out of line sometimes, fine, I'll admit to it. But you know what? Like, at the end of the day, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm not here to make you feel good, okay? I'm not here to be your hero. I'm not here to, you know, change my sense of humor because you don't like my jokes. Like, I, I'm just here to be me. And I'm just here to add something to the conversation, hopefully, maybe not, I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, that's all that Rose is trying to do is be herself, add something to, to the conversation while also raising points and being critical of issues that people want to ignore. But guess what? They're still creeping up. It's still happening. Um, so, so yeah, it's cool. You don't want to agree with us, but could we agree on a few things? Like, it, just, can we agree that the kind of care that we get as trans people, it, it, it really sucks. And can we also agree that this whole trans med, true scum, 2Q thing is like for 12 year olds and can we move past that for God's sake? Like, I'm so done with that. Like, have conversations, it's okay. I'm not going to bite your head off. Talk to each other, let's move past this. Like, we don't all have to be friends, but I don't understand why we can't talk to each other. Anyways, thanks for watching, peace.